One of the most important skills that I think a person can learn is the ability to use a rope. There are so many things that you can do with rope that you can't necessarily do with stuff like ratchet straps. So ropes can be used to, if you know a variety of different knots, you can use them in, in uh, critical situations like search and rescue or everyday tasks like lifting certain objects or tying down cargo. It's a skill that I think everyone should possess. And like anything, if you have to have a baseline uh, from where to start to learn different various knots. So I've put together this video, which is going to include 12 different knots that I believe are geared towards beginners. They're going to include some different types of knots, including a stopper knot, hitch knot, bend knot, a binding knot, a fixed loop knot, which is very important, and friction hitches. So Hopefully this video will help you to get a little bit more proficient and a lot of these knots are going to be the building blocks for a lot more complicated knots. So with that, let's get started. Now one of the easiest knots to learn is the simple overhand knot. The overhand knot can be used as a simple stopper knot or as a basis for a lot of other different knots as well. So to tie the overhand knot, what we want to do is we are going to just create a loop and then take your tag in around the standing end and then bring it back up through that loop. And that is the simple overhand knot. Now the overhand knot, again, can be used as a stopper or a basis for a lot of other knots as well. Now, if you know the overhand knot, it's pretty easy to turn this into a fixed loop knot too. So to do that, what we wanna do, instead of using just the end of the rope, we're gonna double it over into a bite. And then we're going to, with the two lines, we're gonna form the same motion, go around, back up through the loop, and that is going to create a simple fixed loop knot using the overhand knot. So this is a very important knot to learn, primarily because it's the building block for a lot of other knots. The next knot that we're going to look at is the half hitch. Now the half hitch is generally used to lock off or tie off different knots so that they won't unravel on you. So the half hitch is a really simple knot to do. To do this, we're going to go around our object and all we do is tuck the back end or tuck the working end underneath the standing end. So the standing end will have pressure and what it's designed to do is to lock the tail end or the working end in place so that it will not come unraveled. Now by itself, this knot is not uh, used for anything in particular, especially for handling any kind of loads because it very easily comes apart. Now there's another way to tie the half hitch and basically it's the same way that you would do the overhand, except this time we're going to tie the overhand around an object as opposed to just tying it by itself. So we'll go around our object and then we'll go around the back side of our standing in, come back through the loop, and instead of pulling it up like this, you'll pull it down, and this is also a half hitch. So there's a couple of different ways to form it. It's not very useful by itself, but it is incredibly useful when used in combination with other knots. Now the next knot that we're gonna look at is called uh, the two half hitches. So as the name implies, it's gonna be two half hitches. We'll go around our object, and much like we did the half hitch down here at the bottom, like so, we wanna create the half hitch around the standing end of our rope. And I'm gonna give myself just a little bit more tail end there. So we'll tie that first one, and then we'll just do that process one more time. And this is the two half hitches. Now the two half hitches is kind of a light duty application. So if you wanna tie up a rope, uh, to an elevated position, this is a good quick knot to learn. But there's a lot of other hitch knots that would be uh, better if you have a uh, critical load that you need to hold. The next knot that we're going to look at is called the round turn and two half hitches. And to do this, we want to go around our object first. Now, if we went around the object and we stopped in this position, that's actually a full turn. But that leaves the working end and the standing in facing in opposite directions. So we want to create a full round turn. The round turn gives us 540 degrees and then puts the working in and the standing in in the same on the uh, coming out the same side. And so that is the round turn. Now as the name implies, we just want to create two half hitches. So we'll go one half hitch, draw it up tight, and then we'll create another half hitch around our standing in, pull it up tight, and that is the round turn and two half hitches. 
The next knot is a very important knot to learn because it's a basis for a lot of knots. Now, this is a knot that I don't generally trust by itself, but it is very important to learn in order to uh, use it in other knots as well. It's called the clove hitch. So to form the clove hitch, we want to start off by going around our object. Then we're going to cross the standing in, or excuse me, the working in over the standing in. And in the same direction, we're going to go around the object again. Only this time, when we end, we're going to come up through this void that's left here. And then we'll pull the working in and the standing in in opposite directions. And that forms the clove hitch. Now, as I mentioned before, the, the half hitch is a knot that's used to secure the ends of other knots. So here's our clove hitch. And if we go ahead and continue the tag in around or the working in around and we create a half hitch at the end of this, this is a very popular knot. It gets used a lot. This is the clove hitch plus half hitch. And so you can see how the, the clove hitch, or excuse me, the half hitch here at the end of the clove hitch actually helps to keep this in place so the clove hitch won't unravel. The next knot that we're going to be looking at is called the cow hitch. It's also known as the lark's head or the lark's foot. To form this knot, we want to start off by going around our object. Then we're going to cross over the working end over our standing end. And this time, instead of like the clove hitch where we would go over in the same direction, we want to change directions. We want to come up under and then send the working end back out the same direction or parallel with your standing end and then draw all that up tight. And that is the cow hitch or the lark's head. Now, it's known as the cow hitch because when you pull off, it's designed to be pulled off of just one end. But you can see that the cow hitch, especially on a slick surface like this, will tend to slip out. So you can improve this by doing what's known as the pedigree cow hitch. So we'll form our cow hitch, and to finish it, what we want to do is we want to lift up on our two lines here, and then just tuck the end directly underneath it there, and that acts as a bit of a lock to hold the cow hitch in place better. Now it's known as the cow hitch because you're only putting stress or pressure on one end. If you are putting stress on both lines, then that is called the girth hitch. So they're very similar, but it's the way they are loaded which distinguishes which is which. The next knot that we're going to look at is called the square knot or the reef knot. And this is not really a bend knot uh, where you would tie two lines together, but more of a binding knot. So if you're tying together a bunch of books or a bunch of sticks, something of that nature, the reef knot or the square knot is a good option. To tie this knot, we're going to take our two lines. And first, we're going to cross the right over the left, We'll bring it around, and then we're going to cross the left over the right and bring it around and then pull them apart. And that is the simple reef knot or the square knot. Now, it can be formed like that, or it can you can do it a different way. You can just form a bite in this line. Start by going up through your bite, then go around the back end or completely around the bottom side, and then send the tag in or the working in right back through that open loop, pull them apart, and that gives you the simple square knot or reef knot. Now, if you were to go right over left, and instead of going left over right, on the next pass, if you go right over left again, what you end up with is a pretty inferior knot. This is called the granny knot. So when we pull this apart, you can kind of see this knot will actually give quite a bit, and it is definitely inferior to the square knot. The next knot is the sheet bend, and the sheet bend is one of the most popular bend knots, though it's generally tied in its double form, and I'm going to show you that as well. So the sheet bend is used to tie uh, two different ropes together, but you can the benefit to this knot is that you can very easily tie ropes of different diameter together. So to start the sheet bend, what we want to do is create a bite, and if you had two different uh, size ropes, you want to create the bite in the larger line. Then we'll take our tag in or a working in from our other rope, send it up through there, and then we'll go around the back side. And unlike the square knot where we would just fall back in, we want to lift up here and we want to send the tag in underneath its own standing in and then pull them apart, dress your knot up. And that creates the simple sheet bend. Now to form the double sheet bend, what you want to do is instead of just ending here, you want to take one more wrap around and tuck it back through. 
and that creates the double sheet bin. You could also turn this into a triple sheet bin or a quad sheet bin, uh, whatever the situation requires. But usually this knot is tied in its double form where you'll make two wraps that tuck underneath of its own standing in. The next knot that we're going to look at is the figure eight knot. Now the figure eight knot can be used as a stopper knot and it's tied pretty similar to what the overhand knot was tied. So to start this, we're going to form a loop and then instead of coming up through the bottom, uh, going around our standing in and coming up through that loop to form the overhand, we want to just continue around so that we go one full turn around the standing in and then send the working in through that loop in the opposite direction and pull them apart. That forms the simple figure eight knot. This is a decent stopper knot, but it's generally used uh, in climbing applications in a fixed loop. It's called the figure eight loop, and it's very similar to tie uh, the, uh, the same way that we tied the overhand. To form it in its loop method, uh, the simple loop, you want to take and form a bite and then we're going to form this in exactly the same way we form the overhand by going around the standing in one full revolution and then coming back down through the loop there and then pull them apart and that forms the simple figure eight. Now it's important with this knot, you just want to make sure that it all lays in there correctly so you might have to adjust it so that you get all of your lines parallel and mine's off a little bit here so I'm going to adjust this just a little bit. The idea behind the figure eight is just to make sure that it lays in nice and flat uh, to give you the best knot possible. So this is the figure eight loop based on the figure eight. The next knot that we're going to look at is the Marlin spike hitch. And this is a, a knot that I actually use quite a little bit. I use it more so for tensioning a line. So what we want to do is anywhere on our line, we want to lift, turn, and create a loop. I'm right-handed, so I turn to the right. Now this is our standing in, or excuse me, our working in, and this is our standing in. So we want to take this loop that we formed, kind of hold down the X, and just bend that over the top of the standing in, like so. Then we'll pull a small bite of the standing in through that loop, and now all we have to do is set a toggle through there, and now we can pull the working and the standing ends apart, and that forms the Marlin spike hitch. Now this is used to pull tension against the standing end of the rope in the method that uh, or the application that I use it for most. Now another application that you can use the Marlin spike in is by setting two parallel lines with multiple Marlin spikes. Your toggle will generally be something like uh, uh, pieces of wood branch where you would be able to create a makeshift ladder. So you can imagine if you add multiple Marlin spikes, you can uh, evenly spaced and you have a pretty sufficient ladder for emergency situations. The next knot that we're going to look at is called the bowlin, and the bowlin forms a fixed loop knot. It's one of the most important knots that you can learn. There's so many different applications for the bowlin, and I actually have a video that shows multiple ways to tie this knot and the reason why I consider it the king of the knots. So to tie the bowlin, what we want to do is you want to create a loop. So I'm going to go down about 18 to 24 inches down the rope, depending on how you big you want your final loop to be and then I'm going to kind of turn my wrist over grab the line and then I'm going to just turn it like you would turn the ignition on your car and that forms that first loop now we'll take the working end and we'll go up through that loop then we'll trail it around so that it goes behind the standing end and then we'll put it right back down through the loop that we formed now at this point you'll pinch off your working end and the inside of your loop pull on your standing in, pull them apart, and that forms the bowling, one of the most important knots you could ever learn. Now the next knot that we're going to look at is a an adjustable fixed loop knot. It's called the taut line, and it's also used as a friction hitch, and I'll show you the difference between the two. Now I've switched ropes because with this knot, uh, it doesn't bode well to tie this with a stiffer line. So I've gone to a, a, a bit softer of a line. This is a good knot to use in paracord for making an adjustable fixed loop for tying like tent stakes, uh, for tying a tent up to tent stakes. So to tie this, we want to start by going around our object. I'm going to get myself a little bit more line here. Now we can 
cross over our standing in, and what we want to do is we want to create two wraps around our standing in, going back towards our object. So there's one, and we'll go around again, and there's a second one. Now let me snug this up just a little bit so it's a little better in view. Now at this point, we want to just bring our tag in down, and we're going to create one more half hitch, but on the bottom of these two that we just formed. So if we go around the bottom, create one more half hitch going in the same direction, now we have finished off and created the taut line hitch. Now the, the, the beauty of the taut line hitch is that, again, it's an adjustable fixed loop knot. So if I put pressure on this, you'll notice that all those coils tighten down and keep the loop from collapsing. But because it is a friction hitch, you can easily slide this to open up your loop size or to close it down. And again, when you pull on it, it will lock itself in place on more flexible line. If you're on stiffer rope like this, it doesn't work quite as well. So that is the taut line. It's one of the easiest friction hitches to learn. Now I'm going to take the form the taut line again, but this time instead of forming it around its own standing in or around the rope itself, we're going to form that same pattern and do it around an object. And for this, because it's a larger object, now I'm okay to use a little bit stiffer line. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go around our object once and make that second wrap. Then we can cross over and going in the same direction, add a half hitch to the top side of those two that we formed and then just pull everything apart. And this is known as the rolling hitch. You can see that when I pull against this, it creates friction around that uh, pipe and holds that securely in place. So this is the rolling hitch, which is formed exactly the same way that you would do the taut line with the exception of the rolling hitch is formed around an object and the taut line is formed around its own standing part. So these are 12 beginner's knots that I think everybody should learn if you're looking to get more proficient with a rope. And they are very good building blocks for tying a lot more complicated knots. Now in future videos, I'm going to be putting together a list of some of my favorite knots. Uh, the 50 knots that I use the most. We'll break that up into about five different videos. So look for that in the future. My name is Ben. You've been watching the Texas Tool Crib. I appreciate you watching. And I'll see you in the next one.